Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC call. Uh, I think you must all know about the process here. Everybody is welcome to participate in this into this meeting, but uh, you must be aware of the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed. And the other piece that governs our activities is the code of conduct, which is linked from the agenda. So, all right, so we have a fairly light agenda for today. We'll see, you know, how that goes. But um, so I listened carefully to the recording from last week's uh, meeting that I couldn't attend. And um, I heard about the discussion of the election. And uh, I just, it, at the same time, it didn't finish with any kind of real decision. So I just want to get back to this and hopefully we can come to a decision how to move forward. But so, before that, let's go through the usual uh, set of uh, regular items. So first, the announcements. Who wants to talk about the newsletter in case anybody doesn't know about it yet? <laughs> uh, well, I would like to give uh, Jessica an opportunity to talk about the newsletter since she has just returned. Uh... Hey, everyone. Hey, uh... welcome back, Jessica. <laughs> Thank nice. you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I think everyone's aware, like Arno said, but um, the newsletter goes out every Friday. Uh, it's a very uh, developer technical audience. So if there's anything you want to add in terms of releases or new features or things um, that need to be flagged for developers in the community, please go in there and you can leave a comment and for consideration and we'll hopefully be able to include it. But we've had it for almost a year now and it has over a thousand subscribers. So it gets a lot of a lot of good eyeballs and open rate click through. So it's a good opportunity to spread the message and mark, market your projects and, and different releases. So. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. So the second announcement I want to make is just really to highlight what happened as a follow up to the discussion that will happen. And, you know, we developed the entry uh, incubation entry considerations. There was a form of a wiki page, then eventually it turned into a pull request against the TSC website or repo. And, um, and so this actually has gone through and it has been merged. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that basically concludes this uh, task at this point. Of course, like everything else, you know, everything is subject to improvement changes. So if you see anything, you know, feel free to, uh, to raise that, but otherwise, um, this is basic, this uh, piece of work is basically completed at this point. And I must thank Dano for closing the issue related. I went to do that in decision log and realized Dano had just done that like 10 minutes before me yesterday. <laughs> but so that's cool. Thanks. All right. So now moving. Well, is there any other announcements anybody wants to make? That would be a good time. Okay, I don't see any hands coming up. All right, let's move on then. So quarterly reports. So we have the EROA uh, report that had been there for a couple of weeks now. Um, I just wanted to make sure everything had been settled. There were questions raised in the report. I heard in discussion last week, some of the points were addressed. I was wondering, I mean, it'd be good if the uh, the report could be updated to reflect these if you know make sure we have closed on some of these questions and they all seem to be you know sysadmin related i would say hi uh yeah sarah pierre from Aroha. i will update it i think that uh um, writing in the comments i will just write in the comments that we have everything settled indeed um we we've received some help with this thank you rai for helping to rename um the remaining repos so yeah i'll just um yeah <laughs> that will also work thank you um so yeah i think that uh we're good on our questions but uh, i'm here if we if you have any questions on the report or about or a general pro pro progress and uh yeah i'm here if there are any questions all right Sorry well, for an early you. report i got a little bit confused and this time i wasn't late with the report i was a little bit early <laughs> Sorry for that. 
No, but there's no worries. It's not a problem. <laughs> we don't mind. Uh, no, thank you very much. And so I'm glad this is settled. And we, you know, the record will show that. You know, I didn't want the page to stay as it was with like these questions open. And you know, thank you to add the comment. Is there any questions from anyone on EROA report otherwise? Okay, if not, then we got two new reports. There is one from Aries and the other from Indy. Um, and the re there is one at least that is worth opening and discussing a bit because there are questions being raised. I mean, I don't know that, you know, there are questions that we can really do much about, but uh, they are giving us some heads up on what's going on. And uh, I thought it was worth just highlighting and uh, I don't know how many people have I looked since I looked yesterday, how many people had a chance to look at this report, but are there any questions from anyone? You know, the contributor community, the diversity aspect, of course, is not really any different from what about every project faces. It's probably the most common challenge across Hyperledger and probably other projects. I can't believe this is specific to Hyperledger. I actually know it's not because I'm also involved in some LF Edge project and they have the same problem. So this is a pretty common problem. But so I think it's good that they are talking about, you know, actually taking some specific action to try to raise awareness and hopefully drive more contributors. Okay, I don't see any hands up. So I take it that nobody has any comments or questions about those. I mean, they just came up as usual. I will carry them, those two forward one more week. So if there's anything else that comes up, we'll still have a chance to discuss that. All right, so that settles. Oh, Nathan, go ahead. Oh, I would just like to say thank you to Stephen for putting those reports together as folks have moved around from different job responsibilities and also as the standards processes at DIFF and W3C have heated up. A lot of the maintainers who've been working on these reports regularly have had a lot of extra things to do. And so a big thanks to the community members who are helping out making sure the paperwork stays on track. Yes, I think that's a fair statement. I agree. All right, so with that done, then I think we can get into the discussion items. So primarily, again, I just wanted to close this, hopefully close, the question of the, 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 the election, which is always an interesting topic we spend a lot of time on. Um, I wanted to first address one point that seemed to be raised uh, several times, and I saw Arun also raised it in the, TS, in the TSC channel on the chat system, the new one. It's the question of, well, whether it is up to the TSC to make those decisions in the first place. And I think Hart uh, addressed that point, but I want to reinforce it. You know, yes, you could argue that the board should be having all this discussion and making those decisions for us. For better and for worse, basically this is all delegated to us. So historically, this is how it's been done. We do our own, like, you know, we, we, we figure it, it out ourselves. And if what the decision we make in terms of the election has an impact on what is said in the charter about this election, then we go back to the governing board and ask for them to approve the change we want to make. That's what we did when, for instance, we raised the number, increased the number of seats on the TSC last time around. But in the charter, there is very little said anyway about the election. And so it means we have a lot of leeway when it comes to the details on how we go at doing this election. And there is no, nobody else is going to do it. And I'm participating in the governing board as the chair of the TSC. And I can't tell you, I, I can guarantee they are not going into the gory details of how we run our election. They're more than happy to leave all these details to us. So. I just want that to be clear, you, you know, it's not a matter of, well, 
are we infringing on you know the scope of our authority here we we it's up to us we can just do it and again if in the end the decision we make has an impact on the charter we'll just get that submitted to the governing board and approved i'm sure you know unless it's outrageous uh, most likely they will just acknowledge and approve it so with that said I wanted to go back so you know I, I was aware of the proposal right at the shared these ideas with me and actually we did a bit of brainstorming together I was trying to help him flesh out these ideas and then so I was very interested to hear the discussion a lot of points that were made I had you know I had made them myself either I actually verbalized some of this to 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 write, but also uh, thinking about it to myself. And so I was glad to, and I kind of amused that a lot of those same points were made throughout the discussion last week. But um, I think I, it's important to try and go back to the, the, the original motivation. This, I think there were really two aspects to it. There, is, there was an interest in ensuring that we have better representation from the different groups and projects within the community. And then there is maybe the, the primary factor, honestly, was the pain that the, the staff and Rai in particular, you know, goes through running this election. I think the diversity aspect is definitely interesting and um, maybe worth, you know, thinking about some more. Um, the pain point, I think, is something we can actually address in other ways than, than what has been proposed, which is a pretty major change. And, and I don't think the two should be tied together. And, and I'll be pretty blunt. I, the, most of the problems come from the way we are building this list of voters, right? The people who are eligible to vote and then to nom get nominated for the election itself. And um, it has to do with, so we're running all these scripts and we're asking people to check and register and there's like tons of duplicates and th there is lots of emails that are not valid. And I think this is what we should focus on. It's like, well, what can we do? So I'll be burnt and I'll say first that, you know, I think the staff does too much <laughs> because at the end of the day, you know, they spend a lot of time trying to build this huge list of a lot of people who don't care and don't vote. And so I'll be honest, I think that the staff should try less, you know, not try that hard to, to get this, this list uh, uh, built that way and, and, and make sure that, you know, everybody got their preferred email in and all that stuff. At the end of the day, I think this is kind of like the burden is on people to make sure they're using a valid email address to start with. And if they don't, well, then we can contact them and that's just the way it is. But there's maybe a, a way beyond that, which is to kind of reverse this process entirely. And instead of trying to guess who should be on the list is to have a registration process. So we start with an empty list instead of, right now we basically start with a huge list gathered from all sorts of like script running against all the repos and all that stuff. And then we try to clean this because there's a lot of garbage in it. And I'm thinking maybe we should take this a different approach, which is to start with an empty list and have a registration process. And we blast all the mailing lists from the groups and projects and we say, hey, there's an election coming up. If you're interested in participating, go register. And we can talk about a little bit Maybe there's some check that can be made. We can ask, you know, as part of the registration, what makes people think they qualify to be on that list because the criteria remains the same. But, uh, and we can do some checks to verify that they actually, you know, uh, uh, qualify. And this was actually done already. There is already a program that was developed last year. Uh, Dave Usby participated in developing this where you could go and type your email address and it tells you whether you're on or not. And if you're not, you can escalate and say why well, you think you should be on. And so something like this can still be put in place. So it's not like a free for all, but I think that probably would reduce drastically the amount of work the staff has to go through to clean this up because 
um, fundamentally there will be fewer interactions because there are fewer people anyway who will participate in this whole process. So I'll stop this. I've been talking for a while. I saw a few hands going up. So let's start with Nathan. Um, in, in terms of like the issues around the, the proposal? Well, I don't know, you raised your hand. So you... Oh, sorry, my hand was, was still up. Um, so uh, ah, okay. let's continue the discussion. <laughs> All right, so who is next? Hart. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I just want to make sure and make sure we hear from the staff that a, like a manual registration model would actually be easier for them. I'm yeah, not I think that's a fair question. I'm not entirely convinced it would be. It, it definitely might be. I'm just not the expert, and I would love to hear from them on that. Yeah. I will say that uh, I think the answer is yes, because we would get a valid email address um, and dealing with the invalid email addresses and email deliverability um is is a huge part of of the problem so i i think the answer is is yes but i haven't done it so who knows maybe i'm wrong <laughs> all right thank you right tracy's next i would uh i have two points um the first one is related to what we've just said uh I'm not convinced that we have a mechanism to communicate to all of the people who want to be involved in a TSC election, right? If we don't have a mechanism to get valid email addresses, how do we have a mechanism to tell them that a TSC election is happening? And if you're interested in participating in the TSC election, uh, add your email to this form, right? Uh, I'm, I'm really concerned that we're going to have less interest even with people who were interested in participating so that's my first point uh, my second point is completely separate so i think maybe i'll stop there and bring up the second point when this discussion is finished well so i, I let me react to the, the the point you just made then because i agree with that with what you said and the same thought occurred to me when i was thinking about that but you know Again, it's like, if we can't reach out to these people, I mean, isn't it, it's, you know, I understand it's our duty to try to reach out to everybody as much as possible, but how much, how much pain we are supposed to go through to do that is really the question here. I think today there's just too much time spent on trying to figure things out that it's a situation that was created by the very people we're trying to contact. So maybe we should take this as a sign that they don't really care that we can contact them. When they put email addresses that are not valid, it's like, well, okay, it's their choice. But, but I think that that's not really where the problem lies with the existing process, right? The amount of time it takes is not dealing with the invalid email addresses, it's dealing with the duplicate email addresses. Those are two very separate things. Um, and if you have two email addresses for the same person, you send an email to both of them and ask them which one they want to use, right? And if they don't respond, then you have to pick one. Or we don't pick one. We well, don't I, have... guess you, I guess you could delete both of them. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm somewhat handicapped here in that I can't raise my hand. Um, we do have one other good way to reach out. Um, we do have the ability to send basically a notice to everyone that's in the org. We've used this in the past. Um, so we do have a way that isn't email that will reach all the members of the org. Um, you talk so, about the GitHub org. Of the GitHub work, yes. Yeah. So I, I see the floor. I see Tracy's hand is up. Okay, so we're moving to the, my second topic then, which is: Are there alternative ways of contacting people? Uh, if I look at my profile at LinuxFoundation.org, I see that I have a uh, an attachment to Hyperledger. Now that could just be I have an attachment to Hyperledger because of the TSC 
Um, but I'm wondering if there's information in my pro profile, that linuxfoundation.org, right, that provides us with the ability to contact people who are directly related to Hyperledger. Uh, we obviously have to provide registered emails and a primary email in that um, form. So I'm, I'm just curious, you know, are there other ways that we think that there's a mechanism to actually communicate with people in the community to either uh, say that you're part of the community and therefore you get a vote or uh, you're um, part of the community so you get an email saying go to this place if you're interested in participating in the TSC election. For this, I'm unsure. I, I don't want to give uh, an answer either way. Um, I will, we have a, a, a product meeting later today and I will ask this question. Um, that's, uh, that's a very interesting question and I can't believe with all the time that I've spent on this tool that I, I never thought of anything like that. So thank you, Tracy. That is definitely a blind spot that I had. All right, and that's good. Thanks, Tracy. But so, you know, back to my point about the, what I'm trying, I, I don't know what the best way to do it is, but fundamentally I'm, I'm totally in support of trying to lessen the pain the staff has to go through to run this election. And I heard, you know, Rai basically tell me, hey, I just don't want to have to go through this again. We have to make some changes. And, and we all know Rai is a dedicated person and he's not a lazy guy. And so I, I feel his pain and I'm like, okay, you know, there's a, there's a, I think a balance we have to find between, you know, making a best effort kind of thing to reach out to everybody to be inclusive. And at the same time, you know, not putting such a high burden on the staff that it becomes so cumbersome to try to go through this process. Somehow we have to find a better balance. It's not, it seems like, you know, so far we've all been towards being as inclusive as possible at no, all costs for, to the staff. And I'm trying to dial this back some to make it more balanced. How do we how do we actually achieve that is really the question. And I'm I'm a bit tough, but I'm kind of feeling, well, people should, if they really care, they should be participating actively into the community enough to be aware that we have a TSE and we have an election every year and they should make sure they can be contacted. I mean, isn't that part of being, you know, an active contributor? I think if you can't really do that completely in isolation, if you do, then it's like, well, you build a wall around you and we won't be able to reach out to you. And maybe that's what they want anyway. But the, the point about the duplicate email is a good one. And Tracy, I don't mean to ignore that because I know that's also a major problem. And how do we make sure that people don't end up with like, you know, voting twice? So I, uh, I was trying to use insights as a data source for this. And uh, yeah, my, my hope was that uh, I would be able to, you know, basically download a CSV and get email addresses and uh, as it turned out, uh, like this, this report, the community leaderboard is very close. Uh, and of course the fifth person has a no reply email address. Um, this, is, this is really close, but there are a ton of, of dupes um, because nobody's gone through and and uh, combined all of the uh, all the profiles. Grace. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but just uh, one quick question. Do we know how the other Linux Foundation uh, orgs, or I'm sure you all know how they 
run their elections? Do they have issues similar to this? Do we have any lessons learned from them? Because uh, I totally agree with making it easier on y'all, but trying to be as inclusive as possible. It's a delicate balance, I know. <laughs> but I'm just not sure how everyone else does it. Uh, we, Hyperledger, I think by far has the most people who potentially have the franchise to vote. The way that they solve this is they have a much smaller uh, number of people that can vote. Got it, okay, okay. Yeah, there's a scale issue there. We have a very big community and uh, we kind of created a problem for ourselves by being so inclusive, which is why I'm willing to dial it back down a bit. Nathan. In the past, we talked a little bit about having maintainers and others help with paring down the list, but we ran into trouble where, you know, only the staff really had the the rights to see all the, the this information without having explicit per, or express permission for, on, from the, the folks involved. Um, Ryan, do you have any ideas on how we can maybe crowdsource this from the other contributors to try to help make the problem better? Or um, are we kind of stuck with the tools we have? I don't know that I would say that we're stuck with the tools we have. We've never had, uh, for instance, this report, the community contributor leaderboard available to us. Um, this does export as a CSV. Um, but the last time I ran this report, which was a few weeks ago, uh, it was around 900 people. And uh, I don't remember, but I think six or 700 of those had valid email addresses. Tracy? Uh, so we don't see email ID when we look at this leaderboard, which is great. Um, but secondly, I guess w today the, um, the Git contributor script that runs will actually create a unique list for each of the repos. Uh, so if we had somebody specifically in that project who was willing to go through that list and tell us which ones were duplicates, which ones were valid, uh, which ones shouldn't be included um, because of no reply or they're no longer part of the community or something like that, right? Um, then that could be a, a way to do the crowdsourcing that Nathan suggests. Well, and I know when we did this in the past, one of the troubles we had is those who were willing to volunteer were often also people who were either running or might have really close ties with those who are running. So it created some challenges in that if everyone didn't feel like a uni universal effort was made on every kind of name, it, we don't want to create the perception that people are trying to, to, to ensure their voters are included and not going to a good effort to include everyone. I think in the past, it's always been that everyone was trying to include everyone, but we ended up having a lot of discussions over, did we spend enough time vetting the list? Yeah, that's a good point. And there's possible, at least perceived conflict of interest involved there. But I want to go back to the example you we were just looking at. I mean, can you tell me, right, what would you do in this case where you have a no reply email? Let's say this, this is one case you have to deal with. What, what do you do in this case? Uh, I would, I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, no, no. I, I don't wanna have it end up in the meeting recording, but I would you know, search for this guy's name and I would go to affiliation management, find them. And uh, I would see like, so this is an example. Um, this is the top 10 people affiliated with Hyperledger their count of contributions and they, they are unaffiliated. We don't know who they are. So I, I would search here for that person and then I would try to combine them with either a valid profile or an email address or something of that nature. Okay, so this is a manual process. You would go through every single time you have this kind of email address. And I'm saying, okay, well, we shouldn't do that. This They, they don't have an email address we can respond to. Well, they, they're not part of this process and that's just the way it is. That's the kind of, 
I think, you know, be, it's, it's a detail on, uh, I mean, I put that between quotes, it's an implementation detail of the, the way we run this election, right? It's like, you know, we never discuss what you should do in this particular case, but I'm of the opinion that the staff is going maybe, you know, too far in trying to be inclusive and getting out of their way. I can imagine when you have hundreds and hundreds of entries and you have duplicates and this kind of email, if you manually have to go through uh, searches through a bunch of different tools to figure out what email address should I possibly use for this guy, it, it's just, this is excruciating. I don't think anybody realizes how much this involves for you. And I'm of the opinion that we should, the TSC should make a clear decision to instruct the staff not to, you know, not to have to go through that in their implementation of the election, that they take it a bit easier and say, well, if we can't contact people, if you can't just like, you know, the, their email address is not valid, then they are, we can't contact them. They are not contacted and that's it. I'm maybe a bit tough, but that's my opinion. Tracy? So, Obviously, I used to go through this process and do this, so yeah. I have some insight into the fact that there are no reply email addresses for people who I know the email addresses for, right? So to say that we should just eliminate all no reply email addresses seems kind of wrong, um, <laughs> right? I, I think there's I think there's exceptions to every rule that you could make, right? Um, and, and that's just one of them, and so I. I understand wanting to make this simpler, but I also think that if we eliminate people, we're going to cause grief. Um, those people are going to, you know, throw up their hands and potentially make noise, and that's going to cause, you know, this this question of whether or not we're being inclusive or not. So, um, I. I definitely don't have a good answer, right? I, but I do think that there are things that um, that would cause us to say, hmm, would I really en eliminate a Chris Ferris if he was using no reply on GitHub, right? Um, you know, back in the day when he was the chair, right? Like, would I have eliminated him because he was using a no reply email address? No, I would have contacted Chris and said, Chris, what email address do you want me to use for your your TSE vote, right? Um, so I I just think that there are these sorts of issues that we're going to have to deal with, regardless of how simple we try to make this. But hold on. So let's go for a bit further with this example, because I agree. I mean, that would be an undesirable effect. But I think in this case, you would catch it in some other ways, because we still have this tool. You can go check whether you registered or not. And if you appear not to be on the list, you can appeal and say, hey, I'm not on the list. So I think in this case, you know, Chris Ferris would have definitely tried this and say, oh, why? Right. It's telling me I'm not. Thank you, Ray, for showing what I'm talking about. And he would definitely react because he is involved and he would say, okay, there's a problem here and we would fix it. So, and by the way, does it, I'm sorry if I'm being naive here. I honestly don't know. Why do people put those no reply? Uh, is it just to avoid spam? So uh, the issue is a little more complex than that. Um, sort of. Uh, if you are using GitHub and you don't have a public email address, uh, GitHub gives you that no reply email address. Uh, so that's where a lot of these come from. And a lot of them are also, uh, GitHub is by far like the largest source of them, uh, but there are a bunch of other ones, uh, for example, like uh, qq.com, where it's a series of numbers. And uh, apparently those are easy to get new ones. So I, GitHub is, is the largest one, but uh, they're not the only one. And okay, so this is done automatically by GitHub because people have not published their email on their profile. Right. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it, yes. You can, so the thing is you can get their profile from that, but again, it's manual. Um, Cause it, it'll be like no reply plus uh, Rye Jones at github.org or whatever, you know, whatever it is. So you can get there and. All right. Okay, any other opinions on all this? Because so I'm afraid that, you know, the status quo is we're going to repeat the same process as we had last year, which, you know, is being deemed quite painful by the staff. And I think that's an unfortunate status quo. But this is where we stand. So short of finding ways to lighten up the load there, we're going to just repeat this. And so, by the way, so there, there was the discussion, the broader discussion that uh, um, with the proposal around Rice proposal. I got the feeling at the end of the call last week, there was no, you know, not enough enthusiasm to carry this forward. So it's kind of abandoned, at least for now. I think personally that there's still some ideas that we do discuss further, but it, we don't have the time to go through this for this election. And of course, Rai said, well, nothing stop us from delaying the election to, you know, later. So we have time to figure all this out, but I don't know if we want to go through this. So I take it that the default is, you know, we're sticking with the current process Maybe there are things we can find out to lighten up the implementation aspect of it, but the process doesn't change. Am I right here? I feel sorry for the staff. I mean, Arno, I do agree with what you were saying about, you know, put the onus on the people with the bad email addresses rather than putting the onus on the staff. If there's a way for them, if there's a way for us to get the word out that this is our policy and they can go check their profile and their email addresses, I think we can put the onus on them for that. I think Tracy said, you know, one of the problems is the duplicates, which might still have to be reconciled manually. Yeah. Grace? Just to be clear, it sounds like we're. So I know Rye put together a proposal last week on the, or, you know, I don't know the right answer. It's very, and definitely want to help the staff in any way we can. Uh, so it, it sounds like what we're agreeing is that the proposal from last week was not a good fit uh, for the needs. And instead coming, uh, I'm just saying this out loud again to make sure I'm following. <laughs> and then we are recommending the just current process. So I just, we just haven't looked at the recommendation from last week. So I want to make sure that's, um, or the, the, the proposal from last week. Well, yeah, I think, it, thank you for bringing this up because I agree. It's important to be clear on the status of this proposal that, you know, Rye put forward last week. I think I, and I may be wrong. So tell me guys, if you think I'm jumping the gun here and say, this is basically being discarded at least for now. But that, my feeling was, well, one aspect, again, there, I think there were two motiva main motivations for it. One is the diversity aspect, representation from different groups. And then the other part was the pain involved in the implementation of the election, which is just talked about. And I have to say, I totally echo the, um, the, the, the point that was made that, you know, if we left to each project in every group to come up with their own election, they would most likely turn to the staff and say, okay, we have to run an election for our project. Uh, we need your help. And the staff would end up running like, you know, a whole bunch of elections instead of one and going through that same process multiple times. So that would be, I, I think I can see that this would actually lead to less work for the staff because they can't get away from having the people ask for help running their election. But um, 
the, the other aspect is diversity. And that I still think is interesting and might be worth looking at again. So we have other people. Nathan, are you still on or you have left? I, I, I'm on for real this time. Okay, um, go I'll, ahead. Fact, I'll lower my hand now so I don't forget. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we, we took a lot of work and this is credits to um, to Tracy and to Rye mostly about writing down what the process was for the election. I, and uh, the, the, pro, the proposal last week was a, a radical departure from a lot of that process. So I guess part of my question or, or what are the changes that will help most um, or help support Rye and his efforts the most um, to the process as it was recorded before? Um, like, can we bring in maintainers or others to help pare the list down? Um, and can we make official that it's not on the staff to try to hunt you down, but rather it's up to you to go check on the list and, and, and do the appeal? Uh, are those formalized in our, our written election process now? And if not, can we, can we go ahead and formalize those pieces so that the staff has that confidence that they're not on the hook for that? That's a good point. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Tracy did us a, a huge favor in going and digging into all the archives of the decisions. And uh, it's probably something that would be worth capturing into a page that we could add to the TSC that describe all this decision in a kind of like a narrative, you know, that explained the process and all these decisions are captured in one spot. So I think that could be a, a good piece of work to be done there that would be useful. And we have all the material right in front of us in this page that uh, basically we would have to put in there. Dano is under the queue. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say that Rise idea is dead. I think we had like 24 hours to contemplate it and reflect on it. And I think one of the issues with it is there's about, you know, between three and five distinct ideas that are probably worthy of individual consideration. Um, so I think the lack of enthusiasm we saw was there's no way we can get consensus on this in time for an election this year. <clears throat> so I think probably the task we should do is after we get this election settled, I don't know if it's for this TSC or the next TSC, is to consider those ideas independently and see if we want to change it. Because I think the idea of... Um, having active projects or projects that still satisfy all the active criteria, get an automatic seat on the board has merit. Um, having the um, premier members, um, I have a bit of a question about whether they belong as the TSC because they do get governing board seats. Um, and also, you know, giving, you know, the, the, the working groups a, a fixed seat. I think those have some merit and are worth discussing, but I don't think there's any way we could come to a consensus inside of two weeks, which is about what would be needed. All right, thank you. Tracy? Yeah, I, I, I'm i still going back to Nathan's idea. I think that there are ways that we can do what Nathan is suggesting, right, which is reaching out to the maintainers. If we have the staff provide them with a list and basically have them do a yes, no, or change email or whatever the case may be, right? Um, something that could then be diffed to see like what were the changes that were recommended by the maintainers and verifying that those changes look appropriate, right? So that it's Nathan's not deciding that, you know, uh, Stephen can't vote or something like that. Right? Um, not that I think they, they would do that, but I'm just giving you an example, right? I, I think these are the the sorts of things that are the the, the checks and balances that could be put in place to help ensure that the maintainers aren't doing things that we wouldn't want them to do or excluding people that we wouldn't want them to exclude. All right, thank you. So let me react to those last two points that were made, Dano first, and this is what I meant. And I, I, you know, I want to clarify when I said, I think the proposal from Rai is for now discarded. I said for now, because this is exactly what I thought that, you know, we could still look into these ideas, you know, with more time. So I'm totally open to that. Um, and then, so back to Tracy's point, which, you know, definitely I think is worth considering given that, you know, we seem to be 
going towards a repeat of the same election process, I think you know it's one practical uh, idea on, on how to lighten up a bit the 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 cost of implementation for the staff. So I think it's definitely worth considering doing this. And and yes, maybe there is some room for you know perceive the conflict of interest or so and so on but maybe this is something we can accept and you know again trying to balance things out it may not be such a bad compromise we do a little bit of crowdsourcing and you know at that cost dano have we considered possibly a get out to vote uh during the registration bit where every single um, call um, has someone from the TSC on it, you know, every community call or, or development call that they have for, you know, a couple of weeks. So we can basically make it clear to people on the call, you need to verify and double check the donuts on you in addition to the email spams and the, uh, and the GitHub notifications. Is that something we should possibly formalize to make sure we get full coverage of all the working groups and project meetings? Hot. I was expecting uh, an answer from the staff, but I think there are a lot of phone calls. Um, I this I think is a, a very good idea in theory, but would be very practically difficult to pull off. Uh, so what I heard in Dano's proposal was that TSC members would be attending the phone calls, not staff. So I that's more on how TSC members feel about attending phone calls. Because I imagine that TSC members already attend quite a few of the phone calls. Um, so I, I don't feel either way about it. I think it's a good idea. Dana? And that's just it. We would need to figure out which calls we're already on and then which calls need coverage. And then amongst ourselves, figure out who wants to go to which call and make sure that the word gets out. I mean, there's, there's 15 of us. It shouldn't be something that only one person does. It should be very easy to get coverage, especially for the phone calls that happen in strange time frames. I mean, there's a calendar that has these. You know, if the TSC wants people to get out and vote, I think the TSC is the one that needs to go out and do the, the knocking on doors. They'll, they'll, you know, it could serve as a quick AMA for people. You know, what, is the T, what does the TSC do? Why is it relevant? Why should I vote? From an actual person on the TSC, I think that'd be very valuable in those calls to encourage turnout. Okay, I, I think this is a very interesting idea, but uh, but just to clarify, I mean, that doesn't lighten up the process of running the election though, right? <laughs> if anything, you're going to bring if, more people. So if I we move to the point, to the idea where you have to self-register or self-validate, I think it's critical. Uh, yes, but okay. And, and I think it's good, you know, Independently of whether we are changing the election process or anything, this is a, a good idea to do some outreach and making people aware their selection is going on. And if they want to participate, they better get involved. Nathan. Um, I've always done that uh, kind of pitch the election as an announcement in all of the meetings that I attend. And I know a lot of the other TSC members have been doing the same thing. So I think it's fair to say all of us should be prepared to do that. Be prepared to answer questions about the election eligibility, uh, about the form, um, and also, you know, what what you can to help with the with the elections process. I think it's it's a fair thing for all of us that that's part of kind of our our remit as being on the TSC this year to help make sure that the process for getting next year's TSC together is is fair and sound. Yeah, and I think probably as part of the announcement, we should. Uh share the link to the check you you know whether you registered on or not and that way people would have a chance to you know i, I will point out that right now uh there's only one valid email address <laughs> yeah. so please don't do it yet yeah please don't tell anyone i i deleted all of last year's data so uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want people to get upset if they find out that they're not in the list because I am the only email that's in the list. So, well, as I told the Rai the other day when he said that, I was like, "Well, 
I guess that would be a good way to simplify the election process if there's only one voter. <laughs> we can leave it to right to decide. Uh, no, I absolutely do not want that. Um, <laughs> I, no, 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 no. All right. So we're getting closer to the end of the call, and I, I want to make sure we have a clear, you know, understanding and on how to move forward with this before we close. Because as Dano reminded us, under the current process, we're supposed to run this election pretty soon, and. I mean, in particular, it's not the election is in October, right? So it's not that soon, but we have this thing that the process and timeline needs to be, you know, sorted out a month before. So that means September and that's in two weeks. Arun. Hi, so, um, uh, so I have a little different view for this whole election thing. I know even last year, there were so many discussions on this. Can I mean, I, I don't know if it time permits this time or maybe whoever comes early next year, see, should we have a proposal where we move the se selection or nomination or election of TSC, leave it to somebody outside the TSC itself? If, was, if it is us, then we are going to say, hey, this is the process that will be followed and we'll follow this process for the next term. And, and, um, I, I don't know if you, if, how many of us concur on that. Should we leave this process to either the hyperledger team itself or the staff, or should we leave it to the governing board to decide the process instead of us or ourselves deciding it? So as I said earlier, I mean, the, the governing board is not going to figure out all the details. If we ask them, they'll say, well, why don't you tell us what it should be and we'll tell us what we think about it. That's how it works. <laughs> It's like executives in your company, you know, they don't really do the work, they make you do it and they just approve it. <laughs> so I, I don't know who else we would turn to. I don't know the staff, we can hear from Rai, what do you think about, you know, being the responsible for deciding how the election is run? Uh, well, my uh, proposal last week was, uh, you know, pretty roundly, uh, uh, not totally supported. Um, and so I, I don't, I hadn't even intended to discuss it any further. So I was surprised to see that came, came up for this call. So I, I don't know. Yeah, but this is even different. I, my understanding is Arun is saying you wouldn't have to ask for the TSC uh, to approve your, your ideas. You just say, this is how we're doing it this year. Uh, my home address is widely known, and I'm not interested in it. <laughs> so, Arun, I, I have to admit, I'm not sure this really solved the problem, because I don't know who these other people would be. Who else is going to, uh, you know, care enough to figure out this election process? Yeah, sure. I, I guess if... Um, sorry. Go I guess if the earning board asks us to give them the input, then I guess it's us. So there is yeah. no choice. Yeah, I think uh, this is something we, we are stuck with. And we have spent a lot of time, you know, historically, if we added all these hours of calls, we discussed election related issues. It's a bit ridiculous, but that's. That's the cost of doing business, I suppose. <laughs> All right, so uh, is that it? So I, I take it that, you know, for now, we are sticking with the current process, but as a way of trying to lighten up the process of implementing this, uh, oh, in the, oh, sorry, as a way to make it easier on the staff to implement this process, we will try to do this kind of like crowdsourcing where they can delegate the verification uh, of the uh, email addresses they have to the maintainers. I think this is a, an interesting, you know, I, I definitely want to try and pursue this. Are we agreeing on this? Well, 
I will point out that Tracy's uh, scripts do generate the uh, the config file for Git to set the equivalents for email addresses. So this could be as simple as you know uh, having each maintainer take or having each TSC member take uh, whatever uh, one fifteenth of that list. Uh, Dano. Um. This is a bit of a tangent. Why don't you go ahead and finish your thought? Uh, I, I did. OK. So one thing that I think was briefly discussed was the notion of having the members um, kind of register themselves rather than us going to the list. And uh, we don't have time to really discuss it or vote on it for this idea. And it's, you know, it's way too short of a thing to vote on it. But what if we did a two-phase commit where first you would register to vote for this election, and then between the registration and the actual voting, we run it against the list, auto approve everyone who would be in that list. And the ones that don't auto approve um, give some scrutiny and like, make sure they're actually have some level of participation. Um, and that you know, would need to be done publicly for transparency. But I think that would, if we make it clear that to vote on the election, you first need to approve and put yourself in line. I think that we're gonna run into less of the issues that people say, well, where's my ballot? And they never, you know, got, um, they were never on those lists and they thought they were going to get a ballot and they never did, you know, beyond the issue of the email systems just generally being awful. Yeah, so this is very much in line with what my thinking was on this indeed, but Tracy's point is, well, you know, how do you reach out to the people to make sure they know they should register? The get out to vote, the email broadcasts, the GitHub notifications. Um, if they're going to get a ballot that way, then they will be able to see that and be able to do the commit. The first stage of the two page commit say, I'm interested in voting, and then they get their ballot. Now, this is this is the way mail-in voting works in Colorado, to be honest. Yeah, I was afraid this election process would come up. And then obviously, with everything that's going on on that front in the US, it's a bit you know, I'm afraid we're going to have dividing opinions. Uh, Gary, hey. Hey, just real quick. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's always a chicken and egg problem, right? It's like, you know, tell people to register, broadcast, blast out, whatever, right? If you don't have the emails, <laughs> the, the same email list that we're using or whatever, right, is that. And then, then, of course, we're not everybody who, I guess, is a member, you know, has this thing. I guess just a tangential question, and I might have missed this because I have to admit I tuned out for a second. Like, do we actually have, like the only ones I ever saw were like last year from like two people. Like where are these people who complain about like this process? Like, I, I, like that's, that's my whole thing. Like we do a lot of work on this. We're trying to be inclusive, you know, by the way, right proposal on having the, 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 the teams vote for the road isn't, isn't a bad idea, but I guess where's the complaints, right? And if somebody really cares, like, there's no way that everybody can know everything, right? Like we can only do the best we can to broadcast out to whatever email you gave us. If you changed it, if you gave us a bad email, like that's it, right? Like there's not much more we can really do. I, th I think we're, I don't know. I just think we're going, maybe you, go, you kind of what we're saying this implied, going a little crazy on this. All right, so we're out of time. Thank you. I mean, maybe we can discuss that part again next week but otherwise i mean there's this idea of i think it follows this idea of doing a registration process that could yeah. be checked against the list and one thing that this addresses for sure is you don't really end up with duplicates i mean unless people are trying to game the system but let's assume that's not the case all right we have to close on this we're one minute behind already <gasps> um, thank you all for joining talk to you next week